polymer, you might ask? Well, polymers are all around you. They're really much a part of pretty much everything you do every day. So oil, tires, the cells that make up all plants, DNA, the molecule that makes up you, gas, things that you put in your car, your soda, the plastic bottle that you drink, your fingernail polish, your sandwich wrapper, basically everything that you use in daily life is actually polymers. So the technical definition of a polymer is a string of repeating molecules, which is made up of monomers. So you have a monomer plus a monomer plus a monomer plus a monomer. That whole thing together makes a polymer. So a polymer is just a string of monomers. Monomers can be just one atom, or they can be a couple different atoms together. So here's a couple examples. So we have two examples here. This one on the bottom is glucose, sugar. So the monomer of the glucose polymer is HCOH. So HCOH, HCOH, HCOH. Those HCOHs are the monomers, which then together creates the glucose polymer. Another example, polyethylene. So this is what you built using molecule beads. HCH is the monomer. HCH is repeated, 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 repeated. All those HCH monomers together creates the polymer of polyethylene. So basically, polymers are just strings of monomers. There are so many different types of polymers, mostly because of carbon. So like we saw in the video, carbon is a bit of a floozy. She's a little bit of a promiscuous molecule because she can bond with up to four different atoms at the same time. So pretty risque. So if you go way back to our days of chemistry with the periodic table, if you remember how we counted in to find the electrons in the outer shell, remember the electrons in the outer shell, the valence shell, those are the ones that bond with other atoms. So, one, two, three, four. We count it to four. That means carbon has four valence electrons. That means carbon can bond with up to four different things at the same time. And this is how you would represent that. So carbon is a C, and these lines just represent all the different things that carbon can bond with at the same time. So there could be another C here, there could be an H here, there could be an OH here. Basically carbon can bond with lots of different things, which is why we can have so many different types of polymers. So we already saw these two examples. So like you see, carbon, one, two, three, four. Four things bonded to that carbon. Carbon, one, two, three, four. Four things bonded to that carbon. So it's because carbon can bond in four different ways with four different things at the same time that results in all of our different types of polymers that we can get. So one of those various types of polymers is plastics. And from an environmental science perspective, it's plastics that are the most dangerous polymer at this point in time. Oil has carbon in it because it was made of living things. Even though those things are dead now, it still has that carbon in it. So plastics still have carbon in them. And part of the environmental issue is that when, when oil is burned, it releases these carbons into the air, which is causing greenhouse gases, which we'll learn more about. So, we've digressed, nonetheless. So, starting back with that question, how are plastics made? They're made from oil, which is then sent to the oil refinery. At the oil refinery, a process called fractional distillation takes place. So, in fractional distillation, the oil is separated into all of its hydrocarbons. So, the most hydrocarbons are da settled down at the bottom. The fewest hydrocarbons rise to the top. So up top, you get things like gasoline and gases. Down at the bottom, you get the really heavy, thick kind of stuff, with tons of hydrocarbons. So things like fuel oil and diesel oil, these are the really, really heavy things 
these are the things when they're burned that causes the most pollution because they have the most hydrocarbons in them. So somewhere along this way is where the plastics actually come from. So the plastics are made from the hydrocarbons that were in the petroleum. So the petroleum is separated out into its different parts. Then from one of those parts, the plastic is made. So by adding different chemicals to these hydrocarbons, that's how we're able to get plastics with so many different properties. So like you did in the lab, some plastics are flexible, some are hard, some are bouncy, some are stretchy, some are breakable, some are really, really hard, some are flexible. So there are so many different properties, and that's because of the different chemicals that are mixed in. With Here we are. I'll show you some plastics in action. We're out on my sunroom at my house. So my porch furniture is all made of plastic, as you can see. If we go over here, my laptop case. Oh, sorry, I'm making a trick. My laptop case is made of plastic. Some other polymers in action here. I've got my plants. So plants are made of polymers, mostly carbohydrates. Outside, you can see our pond. Again, water is not a polymer, but all of the things around it are grass, trees. You might be able to see my husband cutting some trees down out there, I'm not sure. But polymers are all around you, especially plastics. 